Hello, my name is Virginia and I'm a graphic designer. This channel is about creativity, design and also my graphic design, I documented my graphic design journey. Uh, today is Sunday the 18th or 17th, the 18th of August and it is 8 a.m. So I just wanted to record a quick recap of what the week has been. So starting by um, a book that I, I started to read a couple of days ago, I've only read like 30 pages and it's called uh, Atomic Habits by James Clear. Apparently it's the best book on habits and I'm, I'm very excited and very passionate about productivity and, and habits. So the first few pages has been really interesting. It talks about something, um, I, I can't remember how it's called, but basically how through tiny habits you can improve by 1% every day which at the end of the year means you have improved by 37% or something like that. So I'm one of the examples, so that's, that's one of the things, but then he also mentions an example of the British uh, cycling team and how by improving 1% on different areas of what the team was doing, they got to improve a lot for the following uh, races. So something I'm trying to, so usually on Sundays I plan for the week, um, I use Google Calendar, I just block times for the different tasks I have to do and one of the things I'm trying to do is how to integrate this one person improvement as a graphic designer on my schedule, so daily um, that could mean following a tutorial to learn to do something um, practicing my skills on the iPad Pro drawing or or just learning to use a new tool. So for example, I've been learning to use Affinity Designer, well, Affinity Designer Publisher on Affinity Photo. So that's, or, or even reading a book. So that's something that I've been, um, that, I, that I want to start planning on my week. Like when am I gonna dedicate time for those things that are not necessarily work, but that can help me, you know, get better and improve my, my skills. In terms of productivity, last week I feel like it wasn't very productive and I, I, I did a lot but the problem was the main, my main priority for the week, I have kept pushing it back because I had to start the design from scratch which is quite hard and I'm still, I have a process and it works but I still have to figure out a few things. So the project I'm working on is a is a brand guide for a new designer for a new uh, sorry for a new client, and basically I had to start the you know a new document affinity publisher document from scratch, and it's very hard. I mean I tend to do a brainstorm first of what needs to go on the guide and also what uses the visual guidelines are gonna have on the on the client. So for example, this client they might need. Um, their logo and branding on t-shirts or they might need a stand on an event. So I'm just trying to come up with all the settings in which the logo and the colors are gonna be used so I can work on that part of the guide. But then there is the strategic part, the more the message, the target audience, the tone of voice they're gonna be using with their with their customers. And that's quite hard because I have to write a lot and I have to make sure I com I convey all their ideas on this guide and yeah I just I feel uh, at the beginning of the week I was planning to have it done by Friday and it's it's getting there but it's not finished so that's why I feel like I haven't been very productive I mean the reality is I have so um, I'm working from a co-working space here in Oxford I'm based in Oxford and I go two days, two days and a half a week I go there. Originally this was because um, as I'm finishing online university, which is on a stop at the moment uh, throughout August, uh, I needed kind of a, a separation between work and university. And because the degree is online, I thought, Okay, so the two days and a half that I'm home, I'm gonna be working on university, and the two days and a half that I'm at the co-working space, I'm gonna be working on my business and on my clients. But because now, throughout August, I have kind of 
um, given myself a break from university just to reconsider the idea and then to get back to get back to it with fresh eyes, I have found myself that the day I'm home or the two days and a half that I'm home, I I have a hard time being productive and working on client work. So on Wednesday I was home and I was supposed to be working on this project and I think because I was home my my mind was like, oh okay I have to do university stuff but I'm gonna break with university so then that means I can just do nothing. So one good thing that I I think I do is that when I'm when I don't feel like working or I feel like oh, I just want to relax, I don't want to do anything today, I tend to end up doing research and I tend to end up doing research regarding design and creativity. I think it's because this is something I like so much that when I'm relaxed I just want to you know watch videos of how other people are doing what I'm doing or how to you know overcome creative blog or you know just learn to use a new a new design tool so I think somebody calls this procrastinating learning or something like that so yeah I mean I, I tend to do that a lot and I try to give myself a break and not punish myself for doing this because it's actually potentially a good thing if I do it just once in a while and not every day so the other thing that has helped me with you know talking about the creative blog so the first thing I do is a brainstorm with all these things that the guide needs to have so I can divide it into sections and then the other thing that helps me a lot is to find inspiration so I have started well, a few months ago I started using this new tool called, well it's not a new tool, it's a new tool for me, it's called Eagle, so it's kind of a way to keep inspiration within one one app, and I can't remember how much I paid for it, um, but I, it, wasn't, it wasn't very expensive, I think it was about 30 or 40 pounds, and I think it's a one-off um, payment, and what I do is I divide it into folders, and whenever I see something on, on a website or something, it, I have a, a Chrome extension. So basically I just have to click on the icon and say capture page or capture whatever I want to capture if it's only one area of the website or if it's only one image. Or even I can, there is an option to batch save all the images on the, on the website. So it's, it's pretty good, it's, it's, very, it's a very good tool. And I try to save there all my inspiration, very organized, so when I have problems like this I can just go and be like, oh okay, I have here a section with inspiration for for documents or inspiration for logos or things like that. So that's, that's one of the things I do, so I just go onto this app and check, you know, maybe I have a folder that all the elements I have, because also the app lets you uh, show you what you have saved by colors. So for example, I say, oh, I need, you know, a creative way to use this color throughout a document or throughout a, a website. So I just click on the color and it shows me um, everything that I have saved with this color. And what I try to do, and I saw this recently on a video uh, by someone talking about creative blog, is not necessarily look for what I'm designing. So if I'm designing this brand guide, I try not to look for brand guides, for example. Maybe I just go and find, you know, annual reports, or maybe I just go and find magazines and things that can potentially have a similar layout and a similar use of color in some way, but are not exactly what I'm designing, because otherwise I tend to maybe just copy sections which is, I mean, as long as you change it and adapt it to your style and to your and to your client, I don't think it is necessarily a bad thing. But in order to avoid copying entirely someone else's design, uh, I just try to find it to find inspiration in different things. I mean, the the main block might be use of color and use of typography. So if I go to Instagram to see how people are laying out designers mainly are laying out their color throughout the feed or for for typography there are websites that 
um, you can look for font combinations. I can't remember one from the top of my head right now, but if you wanted to match Helvetica, for example, you will go to this website and it will show you how it looks with different fonts. And then you can, you can get inspiration from there, from the kind of thumbnails they create to present the, the combinations. One of the things that I always do when I'm designing something is create guides on the document. I, I don't know how people can design without guides, or maybe it's because I just learned to do it this way. But whenever I'm starting a, <clears throat> a document, for example, now I'm using Affinity Publisher, so what I do is I create guides on the document. And this way, I at least have some structure, so whenever I'm creating a box or a block color or text, I try to put it on the guides, which is what they are meant for. So this really helps me keep in a structure, and it, they might change later on, but at least when I'm starting, I have a clear, clear guides to where my design is going to go and where all the elements are going to go. And finally, the other thing I've been doing this week, which is why I haven't really filmed until today, is learning about YouTube and learning about um, how to create better content and how to... Apparently, blogging is not the best option. I, I'm not sure if I consider this blogging, to be honest, because I'm sitting in front of the camera talking about... Well, this time it's about a few topics, but usually I just sit and talk about one topic. So... I've learned a lot from this woman called Sunny something. I'll link her down below because I, I think she's a pro of YouTube. One thing I'm doing is trying to find out what people uh, search for on YouTube in terms of design because I, although I want to document my journey, I want to make sure that some of the videos are relevant to some people, to some designers who are starting out maybe. So I have been looking for, I think there is a website called Help, no, how's it called? Answer, Answer the Audience, I think it's called. And, and it's really good because you type a topic and it gives you all the questions that people are looking for on the internet. So, so yeah, I want to make sure that I, I cover some of those, of those as well as, as my own journey. And so yeah, I'll be, I'll be posting soon about some of those topics. So thank you so much for watching. Have a good week if you're watching this during the week. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.